this record. All right. Awesome. It's my great pleasure to introduce Aaron Rask, who is a member of Eagle Group and an alumni of this weekly meeting group. He's been very diligent in his job search and landed, uh, was it about a month ago now, Aaron, or two months ago now? Um, and so he's going to uh, share with us that experience and what he learned so that you guys don't have to um, ride the rough road he did. So Aaron, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us about your presentation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Alan. Uh, and could you remind me uh, the time hacks, uh, uh, questions? Uh, what are what are we thinking again tonight? Thirty minutes should be more than should be. If you got thirty minutes or longer, and we're not going to, you know, cut you off at thirty. So, be sure. my guest. Sure. Uh, and let me just uh, share my screen here. That's cool. I like it already. So can everyone see it? Yeah. Yep. Let me just adjust this. Uh, all right. So uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Rask. Uh, my current role, I'm a business operations project manager at uh, Starkey Hearing Technologies in Eden Prairie via a three bridge consulting uh, through bridge solutions contract to hire. Uh, I'm also in the Army Reserve currently as a captain with the University of Minnesota Army ROTC program. So presentation I kind of walked you through my journey of the, the last few months, uh, and it is a journey, right? And so my slides, as you can see, uh, are our road trip and, uh, you know, navigating life because it is a journey, right? It's it's a marathon. It's it's definitely not a sprint, as as many people say. So, move to the next slide here. So, you can all see this. The one uh, one through four. Yep. All right. So, uh, I'll give you kind of the the timeline of of the journey, right? And and why I call it a journey, and then uh, we'll move into a few more specific things. But uh, the journey of itself, right? So in September of 2019, uh, excuse me, September of 2017, uh, I was working full time uh, at the Radisson Blue Hotel uh, in their accounting office there, uh, nine to five, Monday through Friday. I was also in the Army Reserve uh, attached to a transportation unit uh, at Fort Snelling that was uh, not, a, not a high commitment level. It was uh, one week in a month and, and a little more as a staff officer there. Well, one day I got a call from our boss saying, hey, Aaron, would you like to, to take command, uh, take uh, uh, you know executive leadership of this transportation unit in Arden Hills? Uh, and I said, uh, sure, sounds good, sir. Uh, and so really that started a two and a half year assignment at this transportation unit, the 203rd Transportation Company out of, out of Arden Hills, Minnesota. And uh, Awesome leadership opportunity. had a had a great time managing 152 staff members, seven department managers. Just a great uh, growth opportunity for me, and and really a key leadership assignment in the course of a career. Uh, it was it was still in the Army Reserve, uh, but nonetheless, it was about 12 to 15 days a month of uh, work that that had to be done to keep. To keep this going, right? It's 152 people, but uh, they didn't sleep in between drill weekends. There was an awful lot of training uh, that had to be done and administrative work that had to be done. So I kept working in that that Radisson role, that that uh, nine to five, uh, but got to Christmas break about four months in and doing uh, juggling both jobs and said, "Hey, I can't do it. I got to find something else." So. I found a part-time uh, bookkeeping job uh, with an accounting firm, uh, about 20 hours a week that I was putting in with this accounting firm. Uh, and it was great, right? So I did that for, for three years with this part-time accounting firm and really allowed me to uh, focus on this, this nearly full-time uh, director of the transportation unit uh, with, the, with the Army Reserve. So my, uh, if you fast forward then to, to right before COVID, February of 2020, uh, my tenure was over, right? I had led this unit for two and a half years. It was time to move on. 
Uh, and so I found uh, a new role at the University of Minnesota Army ROTC program. And uh, I, I finished the, the job the last week of, of February, took a, a week's vacation to Chicago, uh, and then boom, it was, uh, it was COVID kicked off, right? And, and everything was, was stopped, shut down. You remember how it went. Uh, well, I had just transitioned to this U of M role. Uh, things had, had shut down, things were paused, things were virtual. Uh, and so then I was doing this part-time accounting job too. Uh, and so that went on for a couple months and, and trying to juggle uh, you know, part-time work, this new ROTC job. Uh, well, as it turned out, it wasn't really paying the bills doing two part-time jobs. So that really commenced then my, the start of my job search. So fall of, of 2020 is when I started the job search. And it was, it was about a year long search from trying to find the, the new full-time civilian position. Uh, I got laid off then from that accounting job in April of, of 2021, uh, Filed the unemployment claim that got denied, uh, appealed it that could not got denied again. Uh, but thankfully, then I landed in in August of 2021 this new uh, full time position at at Starkey via uh, the Three Bridge Solutions. Uh, and I'll get a little more into uh, how I landed the role in in the later slides, but. Uh, Nonetheless, this, this slide itself is saying, hey, it is quite a journey, right? It's, uh, uh, it's not a boom, 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 fill out a couple applications and, and jump right into role. It's, it's definitely a, a process and it takes time and it's uh, frustrating and uh, you'll get rejections. And so uh, it's, it's a marathon, right? And uh, I think I learned that lesson uh, better than anyone else is that you have to take the time and, and uh, put some work into it. So let's move along to the next uh, slide here. And this slide, I really uh, constructed it because the, the job market, I think, has shifted, right? It's, it's not about uh, just applying jobs. It's not the, the uh, spraying and praying method, right? It's, it's, it's more targeted. It's a focused, it's a networking based approach. Uh, and so my, my thought to that was right. Okay. How do I capitalize on this, this networking people based approach, relationship based approach and its involvements, right? So I kind of listed out some involvements that I had got involved in a few more. And, and because of those, uh, connections and people I've made contact with in these involvements that really opened the opportunity to, to the new role. So if you can see the slide here, uh, I'll just go through these, the Wooddale Job Transition Support Group. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. Monday mornings, it's, it's very similar to Eagle Group, uh, same type of format. Obviously number two, which we're in, Number three is an interesting one to check out if you don't know about it. It's a great, uh, it's networking, but it's uh, leadership development focused. It's a monthly uh, collaboration session with leaders uh, hosted by this uh, talent development executive leadership firm called Employee Strategies Incorporated. Uh, it's a goat rodeo, right? That as leaders, uh, it's often we're wrangling goats, uh, trying to get them to to do what we want in organization. So it's a great leadership forum to connect with other individuals. Prouty Project is another executive leadership uh, development strategic planning firm based out of Eden Prairie. They host a similar format. They do webinars with uh, leaders from, from across the Metro. I uh, got to meet a number of individuals that way. Uh, Minnesota Change Management Network is a, a group I've got connected with about a year ago and, and still continue to, to participate in, in their meetings. Because uh, the, the two fields that really emerged from me, for me in this job search is project management and change management. If you don't know a lot about change management, it's, it's definitely growing. Uh, it's an emerging field. There's a huge demand for it. Uh, and it's really the people side of change, right? Of, of working with project managers, working with executive leaders, helping various initiatives get pushed through organizations to accomplish uh, either a, 
you know, a human resource initiative, an IT initiative, an operations initiative. And so it's a fascinating field uh, that, I, that I was able to make a lot of new connections in. Uh, and then finally, jury duty, right? I, first time in my life, I had jury duty in uh, June of, of 2021 and uh, got selected and saw the whole thing through while I was at jury duty for five days, uh, federal jury duty in St. Paul. And I said, you know, you know, let's just get through this. This is awful. Well, talk to a guy who was on the, the he was a fellow juror and he worked for Boston Scientific. And I actually interviewed with Boston Scientific and he worked with the, the interviewing uh, manager. So sent a referral on my behalf. So I was like, hey, you know, uh, of all places, a network, uh, what the heck, jury duty, it's, it's not a bad place. There's a lot of time to kill. So uh, let's go to the next slide. And uh, some, some tool for the tool belt. I wanna just pull up another slide here. It's the scorecard. Can you all see my screen on the scorecard? Oh. Yep. yep, okay. Yes. Uh, so I, I've sent this to Alan and, and Mike uh, Pavic. They, they can send it out uh, later because uh, it takes some time to work through, right? But it's a really, uh, it's a tool that, that uh, the Wooddale Job Transition Group has, has put out and, and uh, Alan and Eagle Group have developed a couple of products themselves, uh, which are all good, right? And, and uh, if you use this or, or use one of Alan's products, hey, that's great. Use whatever helps you. I'm a very organizationally focused person and so this scorecard uh, forced accountability uh, on me and, and I could kind of track my progress and it was a really helpful tool. So this week I pulled from July. Say again, is there a question? No. Uh, so this week, this week I pulled uh, from July 366 points. Uh, and so really what it is, it, it breaks out kind of six steps of, of the, the job search itself. Everything from figuring out uh, your attitude, the assessments, what you want to do, to a strategy, uh, to interviewing, to the follow-up. And so it's really a, a sequential process, uh, waterfall, if you will, to, to get you to the uh, to, to hopefully it doesn't secure a job, but, but it gets you a lot closer if you do some of these activities. A uh, couple of highlight on here, sharing your job search scorecard with a spouse, partner, or family. I think that's important because it's, it's obviously a tough time. And if you can, you can tell your spouse or family to say, hey, here's what I'm working on. I got 50 points today because I had three, three meetings. I had a you know, a great uh, book I was reading, uh, you know, attended a webinar, boom, 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 there's points. Uh, marketing strategy is another one I want to highlight. I think uh, creating the win-win plan for a networking meeting, this one right here. Uh, you should absolutely take, take the time of day to, to figure out who these people are that you're meeting with. Uh, if there's something you can help them with, what their background is, what their career has been like, uh, don't waste their time. Uh, and so put that due diligence in on the front end to, to figure out, uh, you know, that, that win-win plan of, of, hey, can this be a good relationship building, rapport building meeting to hopefully, uh, you know, have them become an advocate for you uh, in this job search, right? It's not to get a job necessarily for the networking meetings, it's, uh, to get them to become an advocate for you uh, in this job search. Sending the thank you card, email, or letter to a networking contact. I thought that was big as a follow-up. Make sure they have the information. Uh, thank them for their time. People are busy. Uh, moving down, just two more to highlight. Ask for the job or the next step during the interview. It's it, it's so easy for recruiters and hiring managers to, to give you the lip service of, hey, we'll get back to you. You know, we got a few more others to get to. If, if you kind of force the envelope a little bit, I think that's okay. I think it's okay to say, hey, can I follow up by Friday if I don't hear from you? Uh, I didn't really get any resistance to that. So, so yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, you can set a specific date 
and then, then ask their permission if it's okay to follow up with and 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 that's absolutely fine it really conveys that hey this is this is your job uh you're serious about this job um and then finally send that thank you note for rejection letter i got uh i got an internship in in graduate school actually uh i got i, I didn't get a an internship that i interviewed for i sent a thank you uh and then about two weeks later, they emailed me back, said, hey, Aaron, a sister company of ours is looking for someone. Would you be interested in, in working for them, interviewing with them? And I said, sure. And, and sure enough, uh, I got the job and did that internship for a few months. So close out of this, go back to the, the PowerPoint here. So that's a scorecard like I talked about. Excel document of companies. Uh, this is not rocket science. This is make an Excel document of all the companies you've talked to and who you've talked to at them and then what the uh, activity is, right? If you interviewed with Sally from General Mills, you know, write that down and write the date uh, because you'll be talking to a lot of people. And, and if you have it documented, it'll help keep you organized. Similarly, make an Excel document of the recruiters you've talked to. Uh, these recruiters tend to jump around uh, from, from firm to firm, right? And, and that's fine, but uh, they're probably going to stay in Minneapolis. They're, they're probably uh, uh, going to come in handy down the road. So track their information and, and make sure you know uh, who's working where and that you've got a good phone number and email address for them. Uh, LinkedIn, we talked about that. I mean, Eagle Group talks about that one a lot. Uh, I don't want to waste your time on that. Monthly newsletter, I'll, I'll pull that up. Uh, I heard from someone, it, it might've been an Eagle group uh, of, of coming up with a newsletter to send out. And so I thought, hey, that's not a bad idea. So I started sending this out a month or two into my job search and, and it, was a, it was a great tool. Uh, last July, the last one I sent out, I was up to 403 people that I ended up sending it out to. Uh, which was great because I sent it out the last of the month, like the 31st, right? And it would literally take me about a week to follow up on all these uh, responses I had received from the 400 people saying, hey, Aaron, you know, we got an opportunity here maybe at, at U.S. Bank, talk to them. You know, hey, Aaron, have you checked out this? Call my friend John, he can set you up. So it would literally be about a, a week's worth of emails that I'd have to take time going through uh, because I, I just checked in with all the people I had been talking to. Uh, so make a list of all your professional contacts but also family, friends, neighbors, former coworkers, uh, your whole network and, and let them know that, hey, you're looking for a job. So here was the, the premise of the newsletter, right? It was, it was pretty simple. And I got my squiggly pen here that uh, so you can, if we can draw. Uh, so here's what I'm looking for. Change management, project management. Here's what I've been doing the last month. Uh, and here's contacts uh, that I'm looking for, right? So what I'm looking for, what I've been doing and uh, future contacts. Uh, and then let me know if I can help you in any way. So it's, it's pretty basic folks, uh, what I'm looking for, what I've been doing and looking for contacts at lifetime and, uh, IPM. Uh, and that was about it. And uh, it was a simple tool. People aren't going to take 10 minutes to read your newsletter. So it was a quick communication vehicle to say, hey, here's what's going on. And uh, so if you want to implement it in your job search, uh, by all means, I think it's a, it, uh, it was a successful tool for me. Now we got the, uh, we got all the squiggly lines here. This is good. Where's my areas? All right, keep going. Uh, monthly newsletter, business contacts. Uh, a number of people at Eagle Group have said some of the best contacts are previous coworkers you've worked with. Uh, I found that to be true as well. People that know your work performance, they can they can vouch for you. Personal board of advisors. Uh, this was helpful mainly from a uh, a mental health perspective, right? To you don't just want people that, that are going to tell you, hey, Aaron, you're wonderful, keep going. Uh, the personal board of advisors was really some, some uncles, some, some trusted uh, like 
guys at church, um, older men in my life uh, that I respected and, and would either encourage me if I needed it or, or give me a good kick in the rear and tell me to get going. Uh, and so it was a great uh, sounding board that I could tell these, these older gentlemen, hey, here's what's going on. Uh, and then family and friends. Uh, we've, we've kind of touched on that earlier. So let's keep going. All right. So uh, this is the actual landing. And uh, how it happened, uh, probably in January of 2021, a friend of mine that I was on the high school basketball team with uh, said, hey, Aaron, you should check out Kiat. Uh, I, I consulted with them a, a number of years ago, you know, check them out. I said, oh, yeah, 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 sounds good. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, well, I did think about it. I, I filled out their general interest form on the website and that just kind of auto uh, set me up with a recruiter. Uh, I met with the recruiter, right? Uh, Molly Sterenchuk, I met with her back in, I think it was January to say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. Here's where I'm at. Uh, you know, trying to translate some of my military skills into civilian language. Uh, it was like, you know, hey, Aaron, thanks for your information. We'll keep you in mind. Uh, and then in May, uh, Molly had posted about a position for an HR project manager role with a financial services company. So I actually interviewed. I had had two interviews uh, with them and, and they didn't decide to move forward. What's that, Tom? Uh, so I had, I had two interviews with them. Uh, they decided not to move forward, uh, but I, I didn't uh, burn the bridge, as they say. I said, okay, you know, thank you uh, for taking the time to consider me. Uh, and then in July, Molly Sterenchuk again posted uh, saying, hey, we got another uh, business project, uh, business operations project manager role open uh, with uh, Starkey uh, uh, Hearing Technologies in Eden Prairie. Uh, and, and so I emailed her and, and we, we had, uh, three interviews on the, the Kiat side, and then they forwarded me to the client and I had three interviews on the Starkey side and, and ended up making an offer, uh, which was great. This, this three bridge on here. So, uh, the week before I got the offer, Three Bridge had just merged with with Kiat. Uh, there's some some family ties in the ownership structure, so they actually merged. So the new name now is Three Bridge Solutions. They've got a broader uh, consultant base, uh, book of business, really around the country, um, and so it's all under Three Bridge Solutions. And and Boom Lab was another kind of leadership development program they had uh, that's merged now into the Crew program. Uh, so it's all under three bridge, right? So it's currently a 12-month contract to hire uh, at the client Starkey. And so the, the to hire is, yeah, pending good behavior at the 12-month mark, I'd be offered a, a full-time position with the client, uh, which is Starkey. Um, so so the, other, the other fascinating thing in the, in the landing, right, is kind of, you're kind of looking for signs and confirmation like this is the, this is the right, uh, this is the right role. Um, you know, is it's it's kind of like dating. Unfortunately, uh, I'll try to keep the jokes to a minimum, but uh, you know, it is right. You gotta it, it's got to be a good, uh, warm and fuzzy for the uh, the employer and and the employee. So, two two other things that I that I can't deny that you know this this probably was the the right fit for me was the person who whose uh, job I'm in. Uh, he got promoted. Derek is his name. He got promoted into another position, and so it opened up this position. Well, he was a he's a former army officer, uh, and so I was able to talk to him before the the actual interviews with the hiring managers to say like, hey man, uh, how does this relate to what I did in company command? How does this relate to logistics in the army? Uh, so that was a that was a huge. Um, sign that this, this is probably a good fit. And he was able to help me on that. Uh, and then also one of the hiring managers uh, that I interviewed with uh, worked for my mom uh, back in uh, 2007, literally 14 years ago, worked in the same office as my mom. Well, there were only three people ever in this office. It was a branch office of a company out in Utah. 
And, and so this, this office in, in Eden Prairie was open for probably 10 years. And in that 10 year time span, there were only four people that ever worked in that office. And Kevin, this other hiring manager was one of those people. So my mom knew him well, you know, well-respected and, and he respected my mom. And so, you know, just a fascinating connection that, that uh, uh, the, the pieces of the puzzle really fell in place. And it was just a beautiful uh, story here. So uh, I really think it's a good fit. Uh, miscellaneous lessons. Uh, this is an interesting one. And this is a, looks like we're coming up on time here. Uh, and, and this is the last slide, but, uh, if you, if you don't take the time to journal, uh, uh, you should, you, there's no better time than now to start, uh, because it's, we, the emotions really get into it, right? This is your job, this is your career, this is your paycheck. Uh, and so to take a step back, just journal, you know, at night before you go to bed is, is a great exercise to say, hey, how am I doing? How am I feeling? Uh, was it a good day? Was it a bad day? Where are we at? What have you learned? Um, so this is a collection uh, of, of journal uh, thoughts that I wrote down that, uh, that I, I called it uh, what I've learned the last year in job transition. So uh, I'll, I'll just read through these real quick. And hopefully they help you, right? And and uh, if 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 they don't, that's fine. But I absolutely recommend uh, pulling out a, a journal tonight and and uh, spending a few thoughts, uh, spending a little bit of time, and and see see where you're at. So, all right. So number one, uh, I'll just read down the list here. So people are willing to meet with you regardless of their position or the company that they're with. Uh, number two, God's faithful and knows exactly what you need at the right times. Number three, saving money in cash is imperative, right? So, so have that emergency account is imperative. Uh, people know how to help you if you can tell them exactly what you need. I can't take rejections too personally. These are just jobs. They're not life. Uh, this this is this is an interesting one. Uh, civilian employers uh, they they need they really need to be educated right on military experience right. So this Eagle Group is a is a great avenue for that. But but civilian employers we I think we need to do a better job to to understand uh, what what military service members can bring to the team. So translation. Uh, of that experience into civilian language is, is paramount, I think. Uh, so civilian employers, we, you know, we have to do a, a better job to help translate uh, some of these skills. Uh, so attendance at a, at a job uh, transition group is paramount uh, for accountability. Patience is difficult, but it's essential. Uh, one of the blessings that has come out of this is there's an emerging initiative within the ROTC department uh, that's been placed on me to help uh, graduates, right? So, so seniors that are going to graduate uh, to help them get connected into the uh, civilian Minneapolis job market. If they're joining the National Guard or joining the Army Reserve and staying local here, uh, there's been an emerging initiative that I've been able to work on to help these Cadets get connected. Uh, keep your LinkedIn current. Um, don't be so hard on myself. That took me a little while to learn, learn that one. Uh, here's another one. Uh, the need to take a break and get out of the house once in a while. Uh, two left here. I need to narrow in on a field in the private sector, right? So with, with uh, the Army, uh, especially on the officer side, you're a generalist, right? You're a general manager, basically, is what they shape you into, which is great for the Army. But in the civilian sector, to narrow in on, is it project management? Is it change management? Uh, is it IT? What is the field? Uh, and, and unfortunately, because the private sector is so big, uh, I think it behooves us to, to narrow in on a field in the private sector. Uh, and then finally, having a reliable computer is helpful. So...
Uh, all right, that, uh, that is it for the formal presentation of the slideshow. A big thank you to the job coaches that are on the call. Uh, Alan, Renee, uh, Michelle, uh, uh, Steve, uh, uh, Mike Oren, uh, I, I, Rebecca, uh, thank you. Thank you all for your support over the last year. Uh, it's, it's been a journey and, and, uh, it's, it's, it's encouraging to know there's, there's people that, that do care. There's, there's people that care about the veteran community within Eagle group. And so it's a great, you're at the right place. If you're looking for a job, you're at the right place. It's a great way to spend your Tuesday nights. Uh, and so thank you to the, the team at Eagle group and, and also, uh, feel free to reach out. Here's my contact info on, on the slide. I'm happy to chat with you. Happy to share what I've learned in this journey. If uh, Three Bridge or Starkey is of interest to you at all, or project management or change management, I'm happy to chat with you about those industries. If you've got a son or daughter interested in ROTC, happy to chat with that. Uh, but uh, no, thanks again. And, and this concludes the formal portion uh, of my